Hello everyone and welcome to Kerbal Space Program. We're currently in the stock system in Kerbal Space Program 1.4.3 but we'll be moving on to realism overhaul in 1.3.1 and the reason for this is I'm introducing this part, uh, Wraparound Service Module. Uh, this is my first officially released, I, I mean I don't know if I should even release it, I mean the texture looks a little bit weird and it probably needs some fixing but it's good enough, it's functional for now. So I think I can just offer it to you guys and then we'll fix it later. <laughs> but uh, um, the, the idea is that this is a service module that allows some payload to be tucked in here so that it is heat shielded without that payload being docked um, over here, right? You, you've seen before this situation and possibly with just one heat shield and so it saves the heat shield mass. This whole idea is meant more for Mars missions than for this particular situation, but yeah, uh, so you can carry a payload in there and it will separate cleanly, that's the important part. Uh, this tank contains 720 liquid fuel, 880 oxidizer, that's 8 tons of fuel, and it has two built-in engines, and they are sort of based on the Terrier, but they're more sea level optimized than that, uh, so instead of having 345 vacuum ISP, they've got 330 but a 250 sea level ISP, but uh, 120 kilonewtons altogether, and the mass is the same as if there were two terriers there. So it's a total of 8 tons of fuel, 1 ton tank, and 1 ton engines. Um, I could change that, but for now that's what I wanted. And we've got the lander in there. And the lander has substantial fuel. It can land on the moon and take off again. That's how much fuel it has. I think it's like 1,700, 1,800 meters per second or so. And with the lander in there, and uh, I think the lander fuel may be unlocked right now. Yeah, let me lock the lander's fuel first, and then we'll get a proper reading on how much fuel we have. Okay, well now it's reading 2,600, but that's not right at all. Or maybe it's because this engine is less efficient and it went up. No, that's something went wrong there. I think it's around 2,000 meters per second uh, just with the wraparound service module tank when you have the lander in there. When the lander's outside, oh, I think it was uh, counting 2,600 without the lander. So, yeah, that's how much we've got. And it seems reasonable considering the size of... You could always tuck another tank in there, by the way, if you wanted more range. You could actually land on the wraparound service module. It's fairly flat at the bottom. I forget about the impact tolerance. I wasn't really thinking about that at the time. But this is another tank with the same amount of fuel. So space-wise, mm, you can make an argument that this is a little bit on the cheaty side. But I wanted to make a standard size, and it certainly should have had more than half of this. So maybe a little bit less fuel in there is reasonable, but we'll think about that. Anyway, so that is the idea. But again, as far as the Kerbal system, there isn't too much use for it because you don't really worry about that much heat when it comes to uh, capturing around Duna. Maybe if you're trying to aero capture around Jewel, but it's much easier to just use lathe or tylo to capture around jewel instead of trying to aero capture around it and carrying the double heat shields is a pain but before we turn to realism overhaul which is what this is really for let us just test that everything works out properly here uh, because that would seem to be a good idea so we want to make sure that the payload inside separates cleanly and doesn't bump into any collider right the trick to making a tank like this is making sure that the colliders are clean so that whatever you put inside the bay will not explode when you decouple it. I had a little bit of problem with that, but eventually, with some help from modders, figured it out. And so here we go. Oh, so we need to ch uh, check out the double engines, right? That should be the right docking port to separate the thing inside. I probably shouldn't, shouldn't have put it this high up because... Um, something's gonna explode when it hits the ground. The important thing is it doesn't explode with the service module. See, clean. Um, explosion of the heat shield, but that's fine. I mean, but the point is, it's separated cleanly from in here. And that's good. 
Now let's see if we can light the engines. That's a very nice plume for the engines. I'm surprised actually that's a nicer plume than I was expecting. I don't have um, real plumes in here. That's a very nice plume for an install without real plumes. Hmm. Curious. Anyway, but yes, I, I think those are satisfactory plumes. We can't go up right now, I don't think. Um, we have a 0.66 sea level thrust weight ratio. So this is still a space system. Okay, on that note, let us uh, turn to how this works in Realism Overhaul. Okay, so here is the wraparound service module in the context I originally meant it for, which was as a service module for the Orion spacecraft. Uh, I never really liked the service module that the Orion spacecraft actually comes with, uh, the European uh, service module that it has. And this, of course, is designed to fit on top of SLS, sorry, SLS detractors and people who hate it. Um, I know it's, it's whatever. Uh, I know all the comments that uh, will ever occur at the mention of SLS, so you can save them. Anyway, uh, uh, fine, it, it can be launched on New Glenn, all right? Uh, this can be launched on New Glenn too. It's, it's, uh, it just will require a separate refueling mission and everything. Um, it'd still need a separate uh, booster to help it on its way to Mars. So there is that. Altogether, without the launch escape system, of course, it's uh, 53 tons, so within New Glenn's uh, lower orbit capabilities, I believe. And, uh, yep, that's what it says down there. And we've got solar panels, we've got RCS. I added protection to these RCS ports. They, in Realism Overhaul, for some reason, the KW Rocketry ports, the, the which, which is what these are, uh, do not have adequate heat protection, but I've added more. And of course, we've got a huge heat shield here, though with low ablator, because we don't need much ablator at Mars. You could put an inflatable heat shield instead, so another option. But these are marked non-RO, so that's why I didn't use them, but uh, certainly this is an option, right? And in that, uh, using this, uh, you can use the engines on the way if you want to. Uh, the engines in this case... Well, we don't have as much delta V, obviously, because everything is a little bit different. But the lander is much heavier, too. But uh, what we have here is 160 kilonewtons, 25% uh, minimum throttle, and 365 vacuum ISP. This is based on the CC methane. Um, that's the common extensible cryogenic engine methane. It's a configuration on the RL-10. Uh, so that's what I based it on, and basically we've got two of them. Um, yep, and they've got two degrees of gimbal. Uh, this is a modular fuel tank, so you can fill it up with whatever you want. It doesn't actually come filled by default. It's uh, 32,000 liters, and I decided on that volume based on just laying down some, some procedural tanks on it. So if we assume that this thing is going to be filled up with um, pill-shaped tanks like this, something like that, a uh, little bit less length, and then, you know, just multiply however many it would take to fill it up, uh, probably like 16 of them, maybe even more, and then check the volume. Each of these tanks is 2 kiloliters, so 2,000 liters right now, and we've got 16 on it right now. So that already makes up the 32,000 liters that we've got here. So it's not not a full utilization by any stretch of the imagination. There's plenty of space remaining in there. And yeah, so I think it's all right. And as far as its structural mass goes, um, well, I might need to tweak that a little. Its dry mass probably needs to be a little bit higher than that. One ton uh, dry, 24 tons wet. Yeah, I mean, uh, I might need to tweak that. <laughs> Let me just put it that way. Uh, I thought about building in a decoupler for these this service module, but it turns out that you can't have a decoupler in it as well as the engine module. When I tried to add a decoupler to it, it eliminated the engine module, so that's weird. I don't know what was going on there. And anyway, uh, so we had to have a separate decoupler 
and we've got the heat shield directly on the Orion module, so there's that too. So basically what would happen is this would capture around Mars like this, jettison the, well, it could keep the heat shield for lander. The lander could take the heat shield down as well. The lander is an Alcor pod. This has um, about 4,600 meters per second of delta V. It also uses methane engines, but they're Super Dracos, methane configured Super Dracos for the landing because they throttle a little bit better. And then it would uh, land using actually the parachutes, um, which are actually on. Oops, missed this tank. Okay, I didn't pull it all together, darn it. Uh, so this is actually on top of this Alcor pod and it has the parachutes. You land with the parachutes and a little bit of thrust from its engines and then it would use its remaining fuel to come back up and dock with the spacecraft. And then the spacecraft has enough fuel to return back home. You can see 2,382 meters per second to make the trip back home, and it has the food one oxygen for the trip back home. Um, it says max crew here, but uh, what we want is four crew members, and it'll have 210 to 215 days worth of food, water, and oxygen in that case. But it could be configured in all sorts of different ways. So obviously we would need something else with the food, water, and oxygen for a trip there. That's a separate thing that I'll have to dock to. And that will also probably come with a transfer stage to help boost it out of Earth SOI. So it'll take at least two launches for this. But yeah, uh, which is a heck of a lot better than some other plans I might mention. Uh, the solar panels do have to be like this and so they extend like that, which is sort of like an, I don't know, <laughs> something raising its hands up like that. But yeah, that's how those are. And But you don't have to put a lander down here. You could actually just land this thing on Mars if you want to. And you could put the ISRU unit in here. And you could replenish your methane and oxygen like that, drilling for it. Uh, the catch is that in real life you'd have to have a CO2 vent uh, somewhere up here because otherwise if you're trying to suck up CO2 from down here you just gotta get a whole lot of dirt and CO2 is important for making the methane and oxygen on Mars. Um, yeah, well, uh, let's just make sure the basic idea of it works out on the launch pad, you know, dropping the Alcor pod and lighting the engines, because now we're in the world of real plumes and everything, so let me just reload this and we'll check. Okay, so here we are, and let's let go of the Alcor pod. The heat shield exploded again, but the Alcor pod is fine, and it didn't bump into the colliders there as, as we wanted. Okay, um, that's those. Let's see if we can stage it normally here. That's the plume here from Real Plumes. Uh... Oh, right. I was wondering why why is there no fuel consumption? Well, that's because the fuel pumps in the launch clamps are still working. Let's turn those off. I'm just going like, uh-oh, did I make a mistake? No, no, this is nominal. Hold on. <laughs> there we go. Now now we've got fuel consumption from the methane and oxygen in here. And everything is okay again. Now they're uh, they're at sea level, so they're under under expanded. Presumably the plumes will go out, flare out like a normal vacuum plume would. But as you can see without it, it's got two thousand three hundred meters per second or so, which is enough to get back home from Mars. And then it discard the service module and use the heat shield on the Orion capsule in order to capture. But there's there's sort of a catch here. We would prefer it if the Kerbals didn't have to transfer to the Alcor pod by like redocking with it, you know, flipping around and redocking or something else like that. It would be better to have like a trapdoor in the heat shield like there was for the Gemini manned observe uh, uh, MOL, um, uh, Man Orbital Laboratory, there we go, um, uh, to open it up and then go in here would be the best. So I'm thinking of making a heat shield with a built-in shielded docking port, but th that may or may not work. 
so it actually default to open and only close up when it needs to be shielded and as its default to open it would directly dock to uh, actually it'll dock to a docking port at the top of this uh, service module and then you know there'll be basically uh, um, which got a tunnel from the uh, through the heat shield to this would be the best way to go and that would be good too because having uh, this capsule inside the service module there means it's basically surrounded by methane and oxygen which makes it a natural radiation shield so if we're worried about some sort of uh, solar event, uh, serious radiation event the crew can just go into this capsule they'll be shielded not only by the entire command module but also by these tanks and yeah I think that's a good idea I'll just leave it here for now um, make use of it as you will I didn't put tweak scale on it and that's because anything with engines a realism overhaul gets rid of the tweak scale anyway um, so I would have to delete that section out of realism overhaul uh, in order to allow for tweak scale on this particular module I did think about making a version without the engines built in uh, I'll make that some other time but for now it's got the engines built in okay well anyway that's something I've been working on there are other things I've, uh, I've been working on and I'll look forward to showing you those at a later date alright so thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed this video if you did enjoy this video please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time